So with that, welcome to Movie the Podcast. That's right, Movie the Podcast. What's this month? It's not Silent Knife. It's not Old Holy Knife. It's not the Knife Before Christmas. It's it was it's a wonderful knife. We're walking. We're talking about movies that are stabby and edgy and fun. Yes. Any 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 kind of uh, instrument in which weapon. you can. Yeah. Any edge weapon. Uh, uh, dual wielding edged weapon. I guess. I don't know. And we watched Blade. My pick. Yes. We watched Starring Wesley Snipes' Blade, Wesley David Snipes S. Blade. Goyer's Blade. Yeah, this movie is a man. You know, this movie propelled the the uh, the comic book movie to what it is now, but unfortunately, it also propelled David S. Goyer's career to what oh, it is what now. It is now. Yeah. yeah. Also, <laughs> apparently, apparently, without this movie, we wouldn't have the Matrix. Based on, is that right? I, I mean, that. just based on the motif and everything. This came I mean, out first. He, Alex, not wrong. I was watching it. I had to look up when the Matrix came. I was like, it's ninety nine, right? Because it is yeah. very, very you know, visually Blade similar. Everybody, I black thought Blade leather, everything. Blade was what ninety eight? Yeah, ninety eight. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But anywho, that's what we watched. We're yeah, all here. Uh, we're gonna have a lot to talk about. It's a fun movie, but it's 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 a it's it's one of the nice times where it's a fun movie, but there's it's so goofy. There's a but lot of dumb stuff. shit. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's great. Yeah. It's uh, not good, right. but it is excellent. Well, what hot take comic books are kind of dumb. Like, well, just saying. I, I mean, we'll get into it, but like, there's a certain level of jank that I wish, like, I wish we still could kind of have fun once in a while, and not in like the Marvel way. And I guess like the the James Gunn stuff comes close to like having. Yeah silliness again but like i kind of miss stuff that was well, just like it, it's a movie as well. that, that feels like it was written by one dude now that dude might not be the sharpest knife in the drawer like pun intended i guess but like at least it didn't feel like it was written by a, like a spreadsheet yeah well, so, yeah, it's on yeah. my committee yeah chat gpt presents blade anyway oh uh anyway uh what did you anyway. all watch this week anyway uh gogs I watched two things. Two uh, things? They're uh, pretty similar. Um, I watched uh, Christmas. Uh, so apparently Tim Allen has a lot of Christmas movies, and I watched one of them. I watched The well, Santa Claus. Snow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Santa Claus. That's it's a lot of fun. My biggest problem with the Santa Claus is that uh, all the elves are played by children. I find it off-putting. Uh I much prefer the movie Elf, where the elves are just played by humans and they're shot so they look small. Not that it's actually children talking like full blown twelve hundred year adults. Uh, yeah, other than weird. that, that's a, that's a weird decision. It's a weird, it's um, a weird one. But like that was, didn't, a lot didn't they turn that into a series somehow? They it seems did. like a they premise that would it. not work well. The Santa Clauses, yeah, it's all law based. Oh, like, there's a yeah, decision. there's some three uh, three Santa Claus movies and then two two episodes. Two seasons of a show on Disney Plus. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Right. But the show only comes out around Christmas. The first oh, season was actually pretty good. I didn't watch the most recent one that came out this year. Yeah, it's a but, fun, uh, it's a fun premise to milk. And Tim yeah. Allen loves yeah. Christmas. Yeah, he Tim does. Allen's one of those people that like I can't separate the art from the artist. I find him so like repulsive in real life. I just I can't not think of him and his awful fucking super conservative beliefs. Anytime I see him on screen. Yeah, is outspoken and like Sean yeah. alluded to earlier, he's a huge fucking hypocrite who ratted out all his friends. So it's like there's his fucking morality. Yeah, like I'm fine I mean, with him selling coke, but don't be a snitch. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, I would rat all of you out. To be fair, me. Oh, I wouldn't. If it would save wouldn't. me a minute off of a prison sentence, <laughs> nah, just you're, yeah, only one minute. You're going to jail exactly. for life. Sons, <laughs> a minute. I get out first, right? As long as I get out first. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm protecting you guys to the grave. Thanks. I don't know. I was I was I was slugging Night some dog. hot cocoa and sitting in front of a Christmas tree and just turning my brain off to who Tim Allen is in real life. Because for yeah. I mean, again, brief... that's the no- that's the normal way to be. I can't help it. I just I'm online too much. For for an hour and fifty four minutes, he was Santa Claus. Um, but then and... you still love Marilyn Manson. No, I, I actually that's incorrect. <laughs> I still love <laughs> Chinatown, I, even though I, was, I cannot uh, also. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that is a, that is a much more accurate thing. I actually was never a big Marilyn Manson fan. I, I mean, always thought he was a big piece of shit. I'm thinking of Eric Saxton. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He was a big fan. I, I'm not a big fan, fan of Eric Saxton, whoever that is. Yeah, I doubt that. But uh, anyway, let's. Eric Saxton. <laughs> yeah, Eric Saxton broke my nose. Oh, I don't yeah. like him anymore. He yeah, did. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Nah. 
and a Denny's. It was at a Denny's. It was inappropriate. Did he um, yell, what the fuck is up, Denny's first? <laughs> no, I forget one what person. preceded that. Okay. No, I get the joke. It's a good joke. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Speaking of uh, uh, big penises dangling oh on my the God. screen in my house. Hell, yeah. Uh, yeah, I end up Can't watching. Wait to see where this is going. I ended up watching a movie I think everyone else hates, but I didn't hate. I watched X. Um, X? The Ty oh, West, movie? West movie? Yeah, I'm not the a only fan. one. I'm the only one that hates that movie. I, I also don't, don't like it yet. Yeah. I, yeah. Most people like it, though. It's generally, cons- people gen- gen- generally. I don't like most like of it. the movies he's made, to be honest. I don't, I don't know if I've like seen anything, anything else he had made. made. I don't know if it's what was the little made. hotel one that ended up it started out okay and ended up really bad? The innkeepers. The innkeepers. That's yeah. his best movie, and it's still yeah. not very good. Anyway, go ahead, Gogs. That's fine. I didn't mind it. You didn't like, I didn't mind X. I thought it was pretty. You didn't I find it, was, it like terribly derivative of every other I mean, fucking it's basically, 70s slasher movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's very much just like like old person version of uh, Texas Chainsaw. But like, I thought the kills were cool. Um, I, 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 I don't know. I found it interesting. Like I was like, I, I, I was with it. Like I knew what are you it gonna was. Go watch? Are you going to watch Pearl now? I probably am. And I probably yeah. ended up watching Maxine just to see the whole trilogy and see it through. Yeah. I didn't, yeah. I, I didn't realize that the gentleman who plays the, uh, the black porn star was kid Cuddy. Yeah. So <laughs> that's fun. And uh, the, the, uh, the, the shy girl that was, uh, Wednesday the, Adams. The, the f- that's Jenny Ortega, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah that, that's not her name, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jenny Ortega, that's correct. Yeah. She was uh, she was the president's daughter in Iron Man three, an heir to oh, the Salsa fortune. <laughs> <laughs> and then the on the the one and the one lady was from uh um oh shoot the song about the movie about singing stuff during college the movie, the movie about singing stuff help me out Alec Anna Kendrick <laughs> no no but she was in that movie what's that movie it's called it's perfect. There it is. It's perfect. Mm. Yeah. Brittany Snow was the young lady who was in that. I, you know, oh. Yeah, Brittany Snow. She's I'll also in some movie where people cut their eyeballs with razor blades. Fun. Oh. Sounds like, and I'm, I haven't seen that. Oh. That one sounds like something I would watch. Yeah. Is it, uh, is it, is, was it Un Chandelou? What's that thing? Yeah, Un Chandelou, the Brunel <laughs> movie. Second time that's come up this week. <laughs> I remember that's when TJ showed me that one. years old. <laughs> I was like, this is gross. This movie is super gross. <laughs> but yeah, no, I didn't hate X. It was uh, also it inspired one of the best uh, alternative songs of the 90s. True. What was that? Debaser by the Pixies. Huh? He made uh, Dirt Bag by Weedus. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Also, also that. Yeah. That's a banger. Yeah. Weedus, big Brunwell fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, that's, that's stuff I watched. You know, two fun, two fun holiday films, Sean. Oh, semi-related. I saved a phone just because it has TJ drunk doing an impression of The Undertaker talking about fucking Louis uh, Brunwell movies. I was just thinking about that time that I called you and told you not to pick up your well, phone. You texted of- me and said, I'm going to call you. Don't answer the phone. I was already confused because I don't think you've ever used the telephone. Not yeah, professionally. No, I hate, I hate yeah. the phone. And then I subsequently did like a five minute rant about The Undertaker and his brother Kane. That was great. Yeah, that was a good time. Uh. I love um, talking like The Undertaker. It's a blast. Yeah. Uh, real quick, I watched a movie I found laying around called a Tokyo Fist. I don't know where I got that DVD, but it's just at my house. Oh, hell yeah. Um, it's actually yours. But, uh, it's fine. I yeah. have the blue right now. But but you had to watch it in that terrible light. Like, yeah, it's like on a VHS transfer. Inch, it's like a four-inch aspect ratio. It looks yeah, like and I don't think it's it not like... like a- it's not like a the whale situation is totally yeah. unintentional. It, it looks like you're watching it on like a fucking Sega CD. Like you know, those, remember the the full yeah. video games that are always like, like the Scotty like, Pippins, like, Windy City Jam, or whatever. Sure. <laughs> yeah, had, like some fucking borders. Like I, I you, yeah, that you that you make the video CNC Music Factory. <laughs> what was the I one? Love that? Night, I Night love Terror, that movie. Night Stalker, Night, Night Trap, Night Trap. Trap. I love that movie, yeah. but yeah, that DVD is rough. It's uh, it's ostensibly a boxing movie with probably not enough boxing for gods, but it's also like a Japanese Tsukamoto movie, so it's about possibly a, a ghost ex girlfriend and shit. Uh, it's his movies like, and TJ's like a bigger fan of his, like not like saying I dislike him in any way, but I think you're deeper in him than I, like the like, plot of the movies. One of my, he's are one of my kind favorite of, directors. To me, irrelevant. It's just like spectacle for me. Like I just like the way the movies look. 
Mm-hmm. Like there's stuff I just think there. it's neat. Yeah, I just think they're neat. <laughs> I mean, it's it's definitely like his stuff is like <laughs> as they say nowadays, vibe it's a vibe based movie. Like I yeah. feel like he he trades more on like the visual side of things than than like the actual and his movies like, are short, uh, which is yeah, awesome. Uh short. I think was it you? It must have been you. Or is you or Anthony was talking about one time you went into some bar in Baltimore and they just had uh, Tetsuo the Iron Man on the screen. They're playing techno music or some shit. It was and it I was, was, it was me. It was it was at the nine thirty club, and it was I was I went. It was a, a KMFDM show, and that okay. was the first time that I had seen Tetsuo the Iron Man. And I was like to the bartender, I'm like, "What the fuck is this?" And I bought the tape. Like, the she's like go away, little boy. It cost <laughs> You're me not like, ready for like, this. The fucking tape cost me like $80. Did you get it at Suncoast? No, I bought it. I got it. I can't even remember. Right. I think I had to drive to this. There used to be this place up in Frederick called the Wonder Book and Video. And they used to have all the weird, like, they'd have, like, the weirdest, like, discontinued old and, like, rare VHS tapes. And I, I used to go there all the time. Yeah. And like they had a copy of Eraserhead back in the day, and Ooh. I think they wanted like two hundred bucks for it. It was like Jesus Christ. <laughs> it was like you got to remember, like, up. like back then, like it's not like we had streaming. Like it was no, it. like you know, what you, I mean? you like, either went to nothing. a mall kiosk or Suncoast. If you were lucky, you get a Suncoast. But even then, like the VHSs yeah. were like, and this was I, this was uh, ninety five. So this like, is even pre like DVD. Really, like I'm not proud of this, but I spent fifty five dollars on a VHS of the Venus Wars, which isn't even that good of a movie, and a Suncoast no. video. Mm. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, trust me, dude. I I remember. Uh, when DVD first, like, popped off, I remember, uh, Alec and, uh, Gogs will remember this. We used, to, there was a, like a FYE or something. I don't think, I don't know what it was called. It was like a music store in Cranberry Mall. Like a Wrecking like, Traders type deal? No, but I think they were like a wider franchise, but I can't remember what they were called. It doesn't Sam matter. Goody, Maxi No, Black. it wasn't uh, like it that. Went, it went through like several names. Yeah. It just kept getting that's the other thing too. Alex, those. right? Like, they record changed, town? They, they changed names. Okay. Like, maybe it was Record you, Town. Yeah. But anyway, it doesn't matter. But they had yeah. a small, like, foreign section, and they had, I bought a copy of A Better Tomorrow 2 on DVD for $70. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Wild. Like, uh, my all time, uh, and I'll, I'll wrap up on saying, because, uh, my all time purchase, I bought a, uh, Japanese import of King of Fighters 2001 for Dreamcast at Power Gamer in Glen Burnie Mall Banging. for $135. <laughs> Banger of a game. So before, too. before, oh, yeah. it was, TJ, before it was FIE, it mm-hmm. was called Camelot Music. Holy shit. Camelot oh, they had music. books too, I think. Yeah. It was like Camelot that, movie, was in music and yeah. books. Yeah. They had like everything. It was weird. It was kind of like a, kind of like a, like what, borders would kind of be for a little while, but now they're all gone. It's it's crazy. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm watching, and I'll wrap this up real quick. I, I'm watching Tokyo Fist, and I'm thinking about Blade. You'd seen and Tokyo talk, Fist before, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Or yeah, I've talked about it on the show, I believe, before. Okay. Um, And it's like, I, DC movies have always been bad, so I don't want to pick on Marvel specifically, but at least they made good movies mostly for a while. Like, sure. they're at the point now where it's like, why don't you give, a, like, Sukumoto a Dark Hawk movie? Give him eight million bucks. Do the, uh, yeah, uh, right. what's it, the Blumhouse method. You know what I mean? Just peel off some weird property. Give somebody a fucking Sleepwalker movie so Alec will finally die happy. Like, oh my God. <laughs> something. You know what I mean? I like, something. I haven't, I haven't bought that Sleepwalker toy I keep seeing at Big Lots. Oh, yeah. Ollie's, 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 Ollie's yeah. Bargain basement it's Ollie's, bro. Time. It's it's not going to get any bargainer. You need to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, they got, so this, the end cap that I sent you, those pictures of Darwin and yeah. Sleepwalker. There's also like 500 copies of uh, the guy from Eternals, uh, the main guy. There's like 500. Like Icarus on what, that. something like that. There, Icarus? Right? Yeah. Like, it, yeah, yeah, Icarus. Yeah. There's like 500 of him, and then like these two random Age of Apocalypse Cyclopses. And it's that was a wild outfit. Oh, there. oh my god! Yeah, the one eye Cyclops. Like, like, like you couldn't tell if it didn't have it on there. It's, it's Age of Apocalypse. We need another cable, but make him next man. What do you want to name him? Yeah, <laughs> right. god damn that story. That's like the best crossover. 
like yeah. ever though. It's so good. Oh, it was so great. Sugar Man's still horrifying, but anyway, like that, that's my big thing. It's like I see, you know, the, the fucking what they're talking about with the next slate of Marvel movies, and like I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but it's just like I'm so like disinterested, and it's sad because I used to be interested in those movies, and now it's like I don't give a fuck. I mean, I think what's going to help a little bit is next year all you're getting Marvel wise is Deadpool three. So I think like taking a year where you're only getting one movie will be good. You know, they're really only doing one movie. Yep, that's it. Wow. I just, I don't know, man. Like, I don't even know if I but care about that at this point. I will say that I'm a little irritated. I mean, I've talked about this a million times on the show. I feel like everything about Deadpool 3 I already know about. And it's like, can I just be surprised, like, for one goddamn thing? And I'm not even actively looking for this information. It's just fed, you know what I mean? It's just on yeah. feeds. And it's like, God damn well, that's, it. Well, that's the problem. <laughs> that nothing is, like, says spoiler anymore. It's just right. like yeah. you scroll on TikTok and like it opens up and it's literally a shot of uh, Hugh Jackman in the classic Wolverine suit. It's like, well, shit. Yeah. Or I, again, I'm not even going to say what I saw yesterday. And it's like, man, that'd have been really cool to be surprised by. Like, well, I text me what I'm it with, is. I'm with Sean. I'm with Sean. Where you like the movie's still going to be the movie, like no matter what, like good or bad. But like. It would just be nice to be like, oh, that's fun. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I just, I don't know. Like, I, the, I'm, last I'm, time, the last time it happened was in Endgame. And yeah. really, like, only with Cap grabbing the hammer. Yeah, yeah. That and, was a hell yeah. of a moment, though. It was it awesome. Was. And that was great. And I'm glad they didn't leak it. And it was fun. And even, like, even, I mean, I feel like Tony dying in the end of the second one. That was surprising. And that didn't get leaked. And that was, like, okay, like, that's yeah. the poignant way to end the thing. And That's, that's the know. movie without any stakes, right? Or is that the one before that? The first well, one has the, no stakes. The, the, one where, stakes. the one where everybody dies has no stakes. Well, you know what? Gogs turned out to be pretty much on the bang on with that yeah, one no in stakes, retrospect. You know that... Oh, coming back. Yeah, it's a comic. I wouldn't be shocked. We're not we're not relitigating this this (laughs) argument. I stand by my comment. But it has in universe state. You know what? Team Gogs now. Uh, I'm I'm there. Yeah. All right. Uh, Anything else? uh, I'm gonna pass the mic to Alec. Uh, I only watched one movie. It was one uh, movie. My amazing, incredible wife Stacy, who is the greatest person I have ever met on Earth. They, they um, should only chop that title you, down. I thought you called her. I thought you called her your white. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> She's not white. It's actually I incorrect. Yeah. I, I'm aware. I'm aware. But I mean, anyway, it's like what? The, the only, a, if you're half, you only get to be like the darker half. Like that's the rules. <laughs> like you know that. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, I can't say even. That. I, I, I can't even know, put on a. I, I'm not. I'm legally constrained from putting white on a sentence form because it says white parentheses non-Hispanic. Like real, they're like real aggro about it. Oh yeah. Anyway, sorry. Sorry. I didn't know the. I didn't know the opposite of white was Hispanic. <laughs> it is apparently. Um, <laughs> she, she got. Uh, she got preview tickets. We went and saw the new Amazon movie Candy Cane Lane. The new oh, Eddie Murphy Amazon movie. We got to see it in the theater last week for free. That's awesome. Um, and I, I, it was really good. It's a lot of fun. Um, What's it about? Uh, candy canes and lanes. Neat. Ooh. <laughs> now, uh, it's kind of. It reminded me of a couple other movies. Like it's 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 a Christmas story. There's only so many Christmas stories they can tell, and all, yeah. most of them are retellings of old Christmas stories. Anyway. Um, Eddie Murphy is a sales rep with a family. He loses his job. Like he gets like laid off like a day before Christmas. Like anybody ever does that. Um, so then there's a contest on a street. They uh, like, have a big contest every year for house decorating. And this year somebody put up a hundred thousand dollars as the prize for whoever wins. So he starts going nuts for that. And then itself would have been a decent enough movie, just him becoming more and more unhinged trying to win this contest. But they also introduce like a mystical aspect um, where he randomly comes across this store, like in the middle of nowhere in an underpass called like Kringles that has all these like crazy insane decorations that are super lifelike. And he uh, basically sells his soul. He signs the receipt and that's selling his soul to them. Oh. To get the decorations for his house, right. um, and like, like the, the dark twist for a Christmas movie. <laughs> isn't like 
Yeah. <laughs> it is. And if he doesn't and if he doesn't get a do whatever task it is he has to do, he becomes a like an ornament. Jesus, Jesus Christ! <laughs> wow, what a uh, bringer! I, I, I thought maybe, he's Paul. Like, what are we dealing with here? You know, I maybe. Was, uh, like, I thought it was really, it's really fun. Um, it's directed shit. Oh God! While I'm talking, look up who directed it and look at the other stuff he's directed. Roger that. It's called Candy Cane Lane. Yep. Um, it's got Eddie Murphy. It's got Tracy. Oh, what's the light skin girl. That's yeah, in all the movies. Tracy yeah, Ellis hot. Ross. Yeah, yeah, Tracy Ellis Ross. Uh, Tracy they're Ellis really, Ross. They're really good in it. Diana Ross is good. Uh, Ken Marino plays the neighbor oh. across the street. He's really funny. Oh, speaking of big penis. Um, Jillian, <laughs> I, I always forget her last name, plays like the bad guy. Jillian she's, Bell. Jillian Bell. I, I think she's really funny. She plays the villain. She's really good in it. Uh, David Allen Greer plays Santa, and he's awesome. Oh, I love him. He's great. Yeah, he Jillian Bell, up, and he looks uh, who? Jillian from Workaholics. Oh yeah, she's great. Yeah, um, it was a lot of fun. It's got a uh, fun soundtrack, and overall, it's uh, it's pretty good. I don't know, like mileage may vary because I know Christmas movies aren't everybody on this podcast jam, and it's very Christmas centric, but. I think everybody would get a little, at least a little bit of enjoyment fun. out of it. Yeah, yeah. It, sounds, it, it sounds different and weird, like which I yeah. appreciate. It is. Okay. And the, like, I, I, I had seen like little trailers because uh, watching the Thursday night games. Yeah. On Amazon, the little trail, like thirty second trailer shows up, and like I didn't quite get the concept from that that it was like this weird mystical like Santa Claus lore part of it too, but it's uh, pretty good. So you want to hear the other things this guy directed? So Chandelou. He directed a bunch of crazy. He's got like a fairly crazy career. House Party, Boomerang. Is it Gary Anthony Williams? No, his name oh. is uh, Reginald Hudlin. Oh yeah, he wrote uh, he wrote a bunch of Black Panther comics. Was he was say, like a, he, a he was an exec at like yeah he was yeah. an exec at like BET. The Great I White Knight. His name. Oh, I didn't the know ladies that. man. Yeah. Uh, and he also did uh, he did a bunch of TV. And he did uh, Marshall, which we watched on the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. And yeah. he, wrote, he wrote some Moon Knight comics, too, if I remember correctly. Yeah. That were really also, good. a little weird for Black Eye. Or did he write it, or did he just direct it? Right. Wait. Uh, the, what? The Christmas movie, the one we're talking about right now. He just directed it. I was going to say, because the idea of, like, turning a black dude into a lawn ornament seems a little dicey. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> It was written not, by a very a very white man wrote it. Not like a, a very ornament. white guy. Like a Christmas ornament. That's a Christmas ornament. Yeah, but the, I thought the was the contest for decorating the inside of the house or the outside. Oh the outside. Okay, I guess I guess I guess see where you'd make that jump. But you could get turned into like a tree ornament. Sorry, sorry, I got oh, too woke. Black people turned into tree <laughs> ornaments is a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah, that's worse. Um, okay, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> the fancy uh, candy cane lane. Okay. Thank goodness. But I think it's it's a, it's a fun movie. I think uh, everybody everybody on the show get at least some mileage out of it. Do you think it'll um, be better yeah. than Beverly Hills Cop Four? A million percent. Like there's zero <laughs> I mean, shit. If it was worse than Beverly Hills Cop Four, I would be shocked. It, it's always nice to have like a weird outsider Christmas movie because like my family, you know, I guess a lot of families probably do this like post like Christmas morning stuff they always want to put on Christmas movies so it'd be interesting to watch something that you haven't seen 8,000 times yeah but, yeah. And girlfriend's like oh do you want to watch a Christmas story is like was something new going to happen because I think we've all seen it enough yeah. I, I'll, I'll put it out there I'm getting tired of Die Hard now because of the whole like oh, Die Hard is a Christmas movie has become such a normie thing now like it I'm is, over it, it. Is, it is turned into the uh, electric boogaloo joke of it's yeah. just like okay like we get it yeah. I'm not letting no one's gonna ruin it for me I watch it every Christmas Eve I do not get watch, it watch uh, Batman Returns that's a that's a good that's Christmas a good movie. idea how had the Die Hard sequels not retroactively ruined Die Hard for you like the Terminator sequels did uh, I love Terminator 1 Okay, you're still down with Terminator. Oh hell yeah, Terminator is a great movie. You don't like Terminator Two? I mean, 
I, I'm one of those weirdos that prefers Terminator One, but like it's wild. Just be like, I'm, I'm done with Terminator Two because that movie. Yeah, because yeah, because yeah, three undid everything, made two useless. Uh, anything um, else, Mister Alec? No, I watched. Uh, I'm almost, I can't take any more of Gox's crazy takes. It's gonna. <laughs> I'm almost done. Uh, Gen V. Ah, how's that so doing? far, that show is excellent. They uh, did you see the trailer they dropped for the next season of The Boys? Was it just the one where they're all in the uh, the boys are in the seventh outfits? No, this was one where it starts out with like the back of Homelander's head, and they show uh. Oh, I think I, guy, you know, I did, I did see. What's that I guy's name? That. He played the comedian, and he played Negan. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He has a three name. He, he, he's in it. Who and like it looks. He's I mean, in like every. Good. He's in like every. I, I it's. I'm sure it's going to be good. Is Jensen Hackles coming back? Because that guy was awesome in the third I, one. I think he is. I think so. Yeah. I think they're alluding to him that he like wasn't fully powered in the third one, so he's coming back and he's going to be like. That guy Uber. was great. Well, yeah, like, he rules. What, like, I wonder if he's always been that good in everything. Because, like, that's, I, yeah. I, I have no desire to watch Supernatural. But he, I know he still don't. Huge, still like, don't. Fan <laughs> no, no, he won't. He was good in, in uh, Under the Red Hood. He did the voice of the Red Hood, which is like the second or third oh, best Batman movie. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, I hope I I love the boys, and I think it's really good. But they need to wrap it up at some point. Yeah. yeah, I feel like, like hopefully this them, will be the last versus, season. Like them versus Homelander, like I don't know how much more mileage you're gonna get because it already kind of feels a little repetitive. Yeah, yeah. And it's the book is enough, not it's good enough. It's good enough though that I don't care. Yeah. But Gen V is I, I like Gen V a lot. Yeah. Um, it said <laughs> it's like a I don't know I don't think there's a book about it. I think it's just a straight up spinoff. Yeah, from the show, but it's set like in a college, like the college yeah, for like superheroes. For people they never they really, have like, like what is it? They so have like, like a, they have like different G-Men? majors and stuff. Like you go into like crime fighting is your major or like <laughs> the arts or like all kind of like I guess just like real life, but like yeah. then they get ranked and the higher they get ranked, the more potential they have to be like selected by a super team. Um Everybody's, everybody in it is uh, really good. Tech Knight, they oh, so introduced uh, Tech Knight in it, and he's really funny. Oh, is he fucking? Oh. Is he still fucking everything? Is that the... He is, yeah, he's like inanimate objects, like everything. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. Like, of Tech Knight is the highlight of the book, it, where he, yeah, it, if, in gentlemen, book, if it's got a hole, I can, I can fuck, fuck it. it. <laughs> I mean, the best is how he dies, where he's like, doesn't he like trying to fuck the moon or something? No, he tries to It's fuck like an, an asteroid. asteroid. <laughs> yeah. That's gonna hit the Earth, so they can throw. They, he needs to fuck it, so they can deliver a bomb into yeah. it. Like I, what I was saying is, is that Gen V seems to be giving all the like heroes like actual character beats, whereas like the the comic was never really concerned with giving the superheroes were just like dumb idiots. Yeah. So, like they and, were like, always. I, th- per- I think me and you probably like Garth Ennis more than most people, but it's like we get it. You don't think superhero books are good, like in general. It just kind of got like, especially by then. It's like okay, I'm done with this now. I mean, I really like that Robinson. comic a lot, yeah. and it was, and like, mo- like it felt like the boys' comic book ended perfectly. Like, it didn't out- let like overstay its welcome. It was like sixty-five issues, and then that was it. And it was like, it was, I don't know. I thought, I thought it ended perfectly. It's like one of the few. Actually, Garth Ennis is really good at endings because Preacher ended perfectly too. Yeah. But anyway, uh, anything else, Mister Alex or? No, not that I can think of. I'm pretty sure that's uh, that's it. Is that? Is everybody gone? Or TJ, do you have to go? I have yet to go. Uh, I watched one thing and one TV thing I want to talk about briefly, but the one uh, movie thing that I watched was uh, Godzilla Minus One. Oh, you oh, yeah. saw that? Uh, I saw it. Uh, sorry, Gogs. I was going to text you, and I was like, yeah, he's probably doing something. Fair enough. Were you doing something? <laughs> Only one way you could have found out. I know. I should have texted you. I'm sorry. That's right. It was like a last-minute decision. I was like, I guess I'll go. But anyway, sorry. He was watching um, big. He was too busy watching big dicks on his wall. I was. Um, Not you, God. It, it, I was also watching big dicks on my phone. Uh, they're always they're omnipresent. Uh, it's great. It's a really really good movie. And not only is it a good like Godzilla movie, it's actually like a good movie. Like huh. it's funny. I watched a TikTok uh, last night where this guy's like, you know, the best part about the movie is that like. 
it's all Godzilla action and like the character, the human characters are barely in it. I'm like, did you watch the fucking movie? <laughs> like what? Like, first of all, Godzilla is in it as much as he needs to be, but like, it's about, it has like a plot, like it's about something like, and I, what I, what I like about it is, and I, you know, I think that the thing that, that makes all like good, good Godzilla movies and not like, not, I shouldn't say that. I, the ones that make you think, like like Shin Godzilla and the original right. and fucking this one is not like Final what, Wars, which is awesome, but in a totally I, different I, way. I'm gonna say I love nobody loves the Millennium Era Godzilla movies more than me because they're <laughs> fucking insane. But no, like this movie is about like post war Japan dealing with like the grief of like literally a dying nation or like a nation that is so devastated. Like where do you go from there? Like the the main character is a kamikaze pilot who on his day of, you know, reckoning or whatever you want to call it, the day that his number was up, he kept, he chickened out and said his plane didn't work. So he had to go. He, he didn't go on his mission. And it's about the, the it's about him basically like dealing with like PTSD and like being a coward and it's kind of fascinating. And then like he befriends two more survivors of the war. Who, like he comes back to his house, his hometown and it's literally just rubble. And maybe this is a little reaching, but like dealing with a lot of the stuff that's going on in the world right now, like watching people go back to nothing that's just been obliterated. You know what I mean? It, it, it definitely brought up some stuff, you know, the, the dealing with current situations now and like, how do you go back to that? How do you live? And he, Godzilla is the IDF. I mean, no, <laughs> uh, no. I mean, Godzilla, Godzilla makes sense. Godzilla <laughs> is, isn't cruel and malicious. Godzilla is just a monster. Uh, uh, but anyway, um, Benjamin Nettenzilla. Um, but Good anyway, one, so he, he finds, he finds, he basically makes <laughs> a family. <laughs> he makes, Thank a, you. He, he basically, basically makes a family out of these two other survivors and then kind of builds his life back up again. And then it, the movie kind of turns into jaws a little bit like with Godzilla, like, cause they know he's coming and he shows up earlier in the film, but then it's about him. Like Godzilla basically uh, gets like powered up more or less and turns into an even bigger monster. And then he's about to hit landfall. And I don't know, man, I don't want to give the whole movie away, but it's fucking great. Did, and like the did way piano make it too. Or no, no, he had nothing to do with this one. Uh, um, but the scenes of destruction are so well done, and the sound design is so well done. And they made this movie on like fifteen million dollars, and it looks incredible. Like Godzilla looks great. The designs, the 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 new Godzilla design is, you know, it's it's new, but it's still got a lot of the hallmarks of like your classic Godzilla. And again, like the special effects are wonderful. Like they don't look janky at all. And like when he blows up the city and is like stomping through Tokyo, I mean, it looks fucking wonderful. The music so is how's, great. Uh, how's King Kong in it? He is. He hmm. is nowhere to be found. Thank God. Um, Wait, this, oh, I thought you were talking about the Godzilla Kong. Movie. <laughs> no, no, sir. <laughs> no. Is this this? Is this like a prequel to Shin Godzilla? Or is it the same? No, it has nothing to do with. Do it. I think they don't How's ever Alex, make. Is Aaron Taylor Johnson in it? No, no, oh. no. Uh, it, they they don't ever make reference to like why the title is minus one. But if I had to guess, it's kind of like basically telling you this is a like soft remake of Godzilla. The, oh, the because it would one. be before the first one, right? Right. Like World War Two. Like cause the first one takes place in the fifties. I know it was made in the fifties, but it takes that, place in like present that, day right you're, you're that's correct yeah okay that's correct. so this takes place like immediately after world war ii okay um so rank the three best godzilla movies so that's shin godzilla i guess this one probably and uh the original does it go shin original this one or do you have any surprises uh no i would say shin shin this one and the original Ooh. i mean i do love i mean i don't know i don't really have to think about it I and mean, there's like 50 godzilla movies but i mean i i do like you brought up the millennium era stuff and yeah. i do like, I love those movies a lot. Yeah, I mean, I love any movie with Don Severn in it, but like, you know, or Dan Severn, but, or no. What about, uh, what about 98? 
Oh, the, the I hate that movie. It's horrible. It's funny because I've seen every I've seen every fucking Godzilla. That movie, movie. had the best cops about, out all of them, though. I was thinking about that on the way home. I'm like, I've seen that, every that movie single the, Godzilla movie. That movie had the best uh, Puff Daddy slash. Yes, uh, uh, Led Zeppelin. <laughs> that was yeah. me again. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I can't recommend, uh, Godzilla minus one enough. I will say, uh, so uh, this sidebar, I, I went to the, the theater in Columbia, Snowden Square. It's now a, a Cinemark. It's not a Regal anymore. And Is Regal I didn't gone? know, I, I didn't Regal maybe, doesn't exist anymore. Maybe I, I didn't know this when I bought the tickets, but they're doing this thing. And I, I noticed it as I walked in the theater, and it's called it was called The Box. I'm like, what the fuck is this? So it was terrible. It's a horrible idea. So what they do is only during certain scenes, they project the whole screen on both walls. So it's like it's supposed what? to be this like kind, some kind of, of like panopticon thing. It, yeah, but it looks terrible. And like it doesn't really work because the both sides of the walls are just because obviously the movie's not really meant to be shot in that way. So it's just blurry yeah. on both sides. I was like, this is a terrible idea. It's really stupid. It's like this is how a goat sees movies. Yeah. And also, like somebody brought their little kids and a baby to this movie and it's subtitled. I'm like, why? Why did you do Maybe that? the baby's I- Japanese. Possibly. Anyway, this was, <laughs> it's great. It's a fucking great movie. It's all, it, it's, it's a nine. It, there's one thing that happens at the end that I think is really cheesy and I could have done without. And that's the only thing that keeps it from being perfect, but it's, it's a great movie. Does I can't John Renault movie. pop in and go, what did you see, old man? Is that no, what the, the problem? The character that, that oh, should be dead, that, that should be dead and makes no sense that she's not dead comes back and you're like, uh, what? That, that's so fucking stupid, but whatever. It's what, it's, it's a very crowd pleasery ending, but it's fine. It's a great movie. And honestly, it's like it, one of my favorite movies of the year. Like I loved it. Like not just as a Godzilla movie, like as like a movie movie. I thought it was great. Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about is I watched every episode so far. I only up to episode like four of the new Nathan Fielder, Benny Safty, uh, Emma oh, Stone how is project. That? I was, I was really yeah. interested. I was interested. I in that. love it. I think it's incredible. I don't know. I mean, I'm just going to be honest. Like, I don't know if everybody's going to feel the same way I do because I love weird ass, like awkward shit. Um, Does it lean more towards Safty or more towards Fielder as far as weirdness? Uh, Fielder, Fielder, because Nathan Fielder directs it and he co-wrote it with Benny Safty. But it's like it's like weird, like almost like it bordering on like Lynchy weird at times. Like it's a very strange show. Also, um. One of the one of the big jokes of the first episode is that Nathan Fielder has like an incredibly small penis and you see it and it's like <laughs> the first time when you see it, they don't make a big deal. Out of it. And you're like, oh, my God, is that really his penis? <laughs> because it's like, I mean, it is small. <laughs> And then, like, uh, I think it's Corbin Burnson plays Emma Stone's dad, and he's like ha- talking to him about like he's talk. First of all, it's it's a great scene because he's talking to him about these tomatoes that he keeps feeding Nathan, and then he's like, you know what I do with them is the secret is pissing on them. <laughs> he's like, eating them. and then like he's like, oh, time to drain the lizard, and he pulls out his like fucking inch long dick and starts pissing on the fucking <laughs> the, the tomatoes. It's a great scene, and he's like, he keeps calling. He, he's like. He's trying to give, like, Nathan, like, a pep talk about life, and he's, like, he keeps calling the two of them the Cherry Tomato Boys. <laughs> Just, like, the fuck? I don't know. I loved it. It is it is odd. I mean, it is an odd show, and it's awkward, and it's it's just, I don't know. It, it's a very, it's kind of a slow burn, but I am all for it. Like, and it's, it's just the very weirdness of it. And Nathan Fielder, I guess I shouldn't have been surprised. Because, I mean, he's playing a character every time you see him, right? But, like, he's a good actor in this show. Like, I feel like I was kind of surprised at him being, like, a good actor. But I feel like I don't really know what the real Nathan Fielder is like anyway. You know what I mean? Like, as as much as Nathan for you is supposed to be him and the other show that he did on um, what was oh, that show rehearsal. Called the rehearsal, like, that's supposed to be him, <laughs> too. But I imagine that that's a character. You know what I mean? I bet like, I wonder what the re he's kind of like a, um, like a Sasha Baron Cohen where like, I don't like, he, I don't know if he's ever done like an interview ads, like, or like a Tim Heidecker. 
Or well, yeah. Well, he Tim's kind of taking down the mask a lot, but yeah, yeah. But anyway, I I really liked it, and for you guys, uh, oh, I one last thing about the show that that kind of ticked me off. So like all the advertisements for the curse is like streaming on Showtime and Paramount Plus. I'm like, oh, cool. I, I don't have Showtime, but I have Paramount Plus. So you go to it on Paramount Plus, and it's like, oh, you, you got to subscribe Showtime. the fucking show. It's like, God damn it. Anyway, it's on the Plex. You guys can, it's on the Plex. Ugh. Anyway, uh, that's I, all I want. I saw the Scott Pilger was on there, too. I got to check that oh, out. Oh, you should check. I think you'll love it, dude. It was great. I really enjoyed it. Mm. Quick sidebar. Sean, are you watching the basketball? Yeah, I've been watching the basketball. <laughs> I don't understand the point Just one, of this. one basketball. I don't understand the point of this in-season they, tournament. Cause, like, because uh, Adam Silver loves soccer, and they do that shit in soccer all the time. But, but like, these, yeah. these courts are the dopest things I've ever seen in my I life. I fucking love the courts. I thought you were, I was about to be really sad that you didn't like them. They're fucking They're awesome. so fucking cool. Like, the NBA was... does cool shit. Like, they, they always have, like, they do so much better with, like, their City Connect jerseys and, like, oh, their yeah. alternate and shit. Have, and, like, each team has, like, 50 of them. Yeah. Like, there's not a better jersey in sports than the Miami Heat, Miami Vice jerseys. Like, oh, oh yeah, that shit. So good. Good. Yeah, cool. yeah but, I um, forget what game was on TV. I was at a bar, and I thought I was going, like, I thought I was going, like, colorblind because the way the, <laughs> the court looked. I was like, what the fuck? Like, why does it look like that? I was like, it, it really fucked me up. I was like, Jesus Christ. Well, like, I mean, it's cool. These, when they were doing in-season game or tournament games and non-tournament games, were they switching the courts out every time? Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, it's wild, right? I guess they they must yeah. be able to pick them up and put them down pretty. I, mean, quick, I know but some it's... some of them have to be able to because they play uh, they play like hockey in the same places. Yeah. Some of these places don't have hockey teams. Like no. they're probably used to leaving that court there all year long. Well, well, the dope thing is, it's like it gets you interested in basketball before Christmas. You know what I mean? Because like you know, what anybody that's a fan of a sport like besides football, where it's a fucking like six month season, sometimes it's hard to get super invested early in the season. But with this, it's yeah. fun. Like, you know, I enjoy it. The play-in is fun. Like, it seems like they keep making shit to make the game more watchable. And, like, the NFL, like, every time they change a rule, it's like, oh, it sucks worse now. This has been, like, one of the worst football seasons I've ever watched in my entire life. <laughs> a lot of bad. Yeah. Well, they got to – NFL needs to figure out how to fix the ref. That's, oh, yeah. they, they're that's, that's the biggest thing. Because you got, like, 70-year-old men trying to run down the field with the best athletes on earth. Like did, you all see that, did you all see that line judge get his fucking leg broke yesterday? I, <laughs> yeah, I it was throw dope. Up. Oh, it's, God, a, it's like so a gross. cop almost. Um, like, it's like could you, I texted TJ just the fucking screenshot. I was like, could you imagine going to that six to not their six to three Patriots Chargers game? Like, fucking missed me with this whole thing. Yeah, that's miserable. Anyway, uh, anyway, anyway I'm pro the back NBA in season tournament. Yeah. Is there a point? Is there not not a point? Does, it, does like the winner get anything? Like do they like they, a, get, they get money? They, I mean that's a good. I mean that's a good reward. Well, like yeah, I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but Dame Lillard was actually making good points. Like there's a lot of these guys on like two ways and like the bottom of the bench. Like this, you're talking about a shitload of money for them. Yeah, they, that's they, true. They, like Jason Tatum doesn't mean shit too, but no. the twelfth guy on the bench it might mean. Yeah, and they're kicking around the idea, the idea of uh, whoever wins the tournament would be like automatically entered into the playoffs, like no, no less than like the eighth oh seed or God. the seventh seed or something. How great Could you would imagine? That be if you get like a team that wins this and then tanks. Oh yeah, makes the playoffs, but they're like twenty and sixty. They're also kicking around the idea of doing a postseason tournament with the playoffs with like the bottom eight teams where it's like, okay, uh to whoever wins gets the number one pick. We're not gonna do this fucking tanking for the lottery and shit. Oh, like that's a fun so, idea. That's interesting. Yeah. All right. NBA's anyway. gonna have tournaments all year round. Hell yeah. Let's uh let's move on. Basketball is my favorite sport. I like the way they dribble up and down the court. <laughs> That was an actual rap song. Yep. song yeah. The Curtis Blow. Basketball is my favorite sport. I like the way they dribble up and down the court. <laughs> like, uh, and they paid him for that. Back anyway, when rap, back when rap was good. Um, well, bars. <laughs> Somebody listened to that in like 1986 and was like, fuck yeah. Someone lost their mind. Someone was like, hell yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure he was dressed up like Rob Halford when he was doing the song, too. <laughs> he just starts like. Someone just starts fucking roboting out of nowhere. Like, I can't. This is insane. 
Gogs. Yeah. What happened in Blade? Wow. This, this what, seems like such a quintessential Gogs movie for some what, reason. I don't know what why. didn't happen in Blade? Uh, you know, for all that happened in Blade, there are quite a few scenes that just do nothing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I feel like most of them. They, they, there's yeah. a lot of stop and restart. There's a lot of there's a lot of cat and mouse. Like we're fighting Deacon Frost. Now we're going back to the base. We're fighting Deacon Frost. We're going back to the base. Uh, do, but then uh, you'll you'll never be a pure blood has lived rent free in my head for like thirty years now. Yeah, shout out Udu Kier. Um, <laughs> Dude, so, Udu Kier rocks. I'm not mad at Udu Kier. Uh, Dude, he rocks. I love him. He's great. So anywho, uh, movie opens to a woman getting her neck bit. Uh, in a hospital, and they're like, "Oh snap, she's pregnant." Very much so. Uh, she's dying of n- neck blood. So let's get her. Uh, let's get this baby out of her with a C section. Dying of neck blood. <laughs> so they. Uh, it starts. It starts where all good movies do at the main character's literal birth. His literal birth in like 1968, uh, and then yeah, this uh, is basically Forrest Gump. Yeah. So then, so then they take, they take, the, they, they rip baby blade out of her, and then, uh, he gets to stare longingly at her through ambiotic fluid, because later he's gonna reflect on this. This becomes a core memory in baby blade's head when he gets reunited with her, spoiler alert. Um, and then it jumps to present day, which is 1998, because no one has cell phones. Uh, and, um, we are, uh, Tracy Lords is taking a guy around town to go looks to. Looks great, by the way. Tracy she Lords. She looks tremendous. I remember this scene so hard, but I forgot that it happens right at the beginning. For some reason, yeah. I thought this was like, like, at least halfway through the movie. No, this is like, so I'm just going to say this, like, real quick before we get into it. My first viewing of Blade, I think, was in like 2000 and something. It wow. was at the Owings Mills hmm. movie theater. And they just opened the Owings. Whatever that. Whatever How long is this theater, in the fucking movies? No, here's the thing. Oh. Okay. Whenever, whenever they when they opened that theater, they were just like, "These are the movies we have sitting around. This is what we're going to show this weekend." Like it was just, oh, it was like a soft opening, and like, like I don't know, Alec. I don't know if you was was a bunch of us were like, well, "Let's go see uh, Blade." I've not, never seen Blade. Me. And I remember I, sitting there going, "I have no idea what this is about." And then when we get to Bloodbath Rave, I was like, "Oh, this is a lot of fun." So. uh I, I saw the movie right down the street from that. I saw it in, I don't even think the theater exists anymore. It's in Pikesville on 140. And I saw it when in a ruckus, like all black crowd. <laughs> and they oh, were way, way down there at that, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Alec? Uh, I don't think it's, it's there. Righteous Town Road Mall, Righteous Town yes. Road Plaza. It's still it's there. The plaza. There's yeah. no movie like down like anymore, it's... Cold Spring, like down that far. No, not quite that far. Not, uh, not like Park him. Heights. Okay. Yeah, that's like on the line. Park yeah. Heights Avenue. Yeah. I saw it way down there. and, and That um, is a neighborhood, that's for sure. They were, that crowd was on fire for this movie. I mean, it was awesome. <laughs> well, it's it was like, so... it's, you know, it's it's kind of striking to see, like, such a, like, like very black movie. It, like it's, mainstream, yeah. you know, it's and, awesome. and by very yeah. black, I mean, there's two black characters in it, but you know what I'm saying? For like the era. Well, yeah, right. but like, it's cool. Like it, it it's cool to, to have, I mean, I was going to bring that up yeah. later, but like, it is kind of cool that, that like the fucking progenitor of like everything comic book started from like a very like black movie. And then, you know, part of the reason this movie was probably greenlit with like not the biggest budget is like, Oh, whatever. We'll just put this, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, this is definitely, this, was, this like, will be a, I bet you it came out in February. I think it did. I, I did actually it? think it did. Um, but anyway, uh, so going back to the movie, this guy that's on a date with, uh, with, uh, Tracy, uh, Lords. Now, granted I would be the same way, but like this guy has the funniest reactions. It's like, she takes me to a slaughterhouse and like, <laughs> I, you know, he just like he sees the music. Like, What's that? Man? What the hell is that? And, like he didn't like you've never seen like a like a cow carcass. Like I don't know. No 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 no. That's not what he's reacting to. Oh, I'm what sorry. Reacting Are you to sure? is, Yes, I'm 100 percent sure. What he's reacting to is a whole bunch of human bodies that are getting wheeled by at some point in the slaughterhouse. Oh, I and that makes that. him do a double take. I missed that completely. Yeah, no, but he's but he's thinking with his pain, so he's like, I mean, I'm a, who can who can blame him? I yeah, right. So ah, those probably weren't corpses. <laughs> they probably weren't. Um, so yeah. then, 
So he ends up going like <laughs> going to see how this plays out. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a slaughterhouse. In, what? What movie like, did we watch? Hacking district where the girl takes the kid to like the obviously abandoned haunted house for a date. He's like, all right, yeah, I can get with this. It was like oh, uh, it's American Psycho body, I believe. Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So anywho, uh, so now she takes. So this guy is not. He's he's no selling the fact that we're just gonna be walking around in a slaughterhouse, and then she speaks, I don't know, growlic to this guy in the back of the slaughterhouse, and once he says whatever ancient possessed tongue back to her, uh, they kick in the door, and now they're in the basement where there's dancing going around. She goes to start making out with one of the girls from Tattoo, and he's like, hey, <laughs> why isn't anyone making out with me? So then this, he's this like generic techno song kicked out of him. That plays that in the song, it's Dude, stuck in I my found, head. I found a ten minute version on YouTube. Like you will <laughs> you will not drive in your car so fast as you have to drive into that song. That song fucking rules. I miss like ambient techno music in movies sometimes. Like it's not something we get anymore. Hey, like it's not quite Sandstorm by Darude, but it's just like it's wow. got all of the same pops and bangs. So anywho, uh not the sprinkler system, but just the floor hoses. Unleash yeah. blood all over the place. Because the sprinklers I wanna, are insane. I want to commend their uh, the vampires' attention to fire safety. Yeah, they still by they not just it. connecting the actual charged sprinkler system. Right, just hooking up a secondary system <laughs> that's blood. Well, you I feel like ever, that must have, that must have happened guys, already. Ever gotten that uh that water from the sprinkler system? Like had to deal with it at all? Oh yeah, oh, it's yeah. horrendous. Disgusting. It's disgusting. It's all so oily good. and shit with all the yeah. fire suppressant. It is yeah. fucking gross. There's there's other kinds. There's the shit. There's these uh, some sprinkler uh, systems that have this like chemical powder in them, and that's even worse. They yeah. don't even have. They're not even water fed. It's disgusting. Ugh. Yeah. Gross. Oh, fire. Oh. I think they had those in Germany. Nice. Oh, oh, I should have said nice. Yeah. I want to say nice. God, there you go, dog. <laughs> Too quick. Don't clip chimp that. So um, now, yep, uh, go on. so anywho, uh, he's getting, I, I guess they're getting sprayed with human blood, cow blood. Um, I assume human blood. They seem to all really be enjoying well. it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, they and didn't I establish think, like, like interview with a vampire or whatever, where you could have animal blood. I think this is human blood only. Right. So they, 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 they do all this. And I guess, cause unlike in, uh, say from dusk till dawn, when all of a sudden the titty twister turns into a vampire coven, uh, they don't it's establish. It's similar to that scene. It actually. is, but, but yeah. like in, in that scene, like all of a sudden the vampires are getting down with everybody. This guy appears to be the only piece of human meat. In the entire world. Yeah, I did. I, I was that. Did, I was kind of like it works better as like a, like a horror movie kind of setup if he's the only one. But it does seem kind of silly that they're like they'd only bring it's a, one. It's a big party just for one so, snack. So, so your right. problems with the movie are the logistics. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean I, but then again, like, like it's like it's like, like you go to a party, and bring it. Like if I, if I if I brought like a four pack of Oreos. Right. right, exactly. <laughs> what the fuck are you even doing here? Why well, those vampires aren't as fat as us, to be fair. Oh, to be wait, fair. there's one coming up. Yeah, well, there's, there's one. So, anyway, um, so this kid's getting the Christ kicked out of him, and uh, and and so he's crawling through the floor, and they're just kicking him in the ribs, and everybody's screaming and showing their teeth, and he comes across uh, the bespoke uh, black leather daddy, which is Blade, and the guy like scampers off to the side, then Blade starts blading the place up, and it rules. Because for the like most of this, like he's he is killing club goers, he's he's killing the gang members from Joker's gang from Tim Burton's original Batman movie. Uh, he's just, I, I, I feel like Wesley Snipes invented fast karate in Western movies. Like this is like a big jump from like like you can tell he actually knows the stuff. Like, like the, I was gonna ask that question. Like he knows. Yeah, karate, yeah, he's like some right? kind of like super black belt, and he's married enough Asian women to have like absorbed it. Well, he's throwing yeah. it around there, like he's cutting dudes the part. He's the really guy good. From... He's really yeah. good at it. Like, yeah, the fighting is really good in this movie. A lot of sword theatrics, I appreciate too. Mm-hmm. The guy from um, what was the TV show with the bunny? Donald the bunny Logue. Donald, Donald yeah, Logue. you brought him yeah. up so many times on the show. Yeah, what was that show called? Uh, uh, show? Grounded for life. Grounded for life. 
That's not the one with the rabbit, though, is it? What am no, I that was Greg about? the Bunny with Seth. I don't think he Green? was on that show. No. No, no, no I'm thinking of Grounded for Life. Grounded for Life. Grounded for Life. I'm pretty sure co-starring Chris D'Elia, who is <laughs> oh, one yeah, of the yeah, worst a piece of shit. on yeah. Earth. Yeah, he was on it. Also, I can't remember. He, his brother on that show was uh, was an actor that we like. He was he's been in a ton of stuff, but he was in like The Departed. He was uh, 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 Leo's brother that was in prison. Uh, that, I can't mm. think of that guy. Oh yeah, kind of slow. Yeah. Anyway, continue. So anyway, Sorry. Uh, Blade blades everybody Donald to pieces. Everybody. Uh, and he, he the, makes, the like the the like staking effects while cheesy are a lot of fun. Like every so time. Yeah, and and they spent some money on Tracy Lords, and she gets got in the first scene. I thought she survived. I thought she was the I femme fatale. Tracy Lords. I mean, let's be fair. I mean, she is it Kevin money. Corrigan? Is that the actor we're talking about? The guy that was in Pineapple Express and shit too. Yes, I think. Okay. So she gets got. Everyone gets got. Donald, whatever. Uh, he gets. Uh, he gets Hand. parts of him. He, well, he gets he gets yeah. staked to the wall. Like what was that game? Uh, Alec, you play oh, uh, Spear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. The yeah he got, yeah, he got penetrated. Um, the fucking penetrator. Are we gonna like not address at all the fact that everybody just calls this guy Blade, like with all seriousness? Like that's I don't know why that's so funny to me. That it's just like, oh no, it's Blade. Evan but Jordan also, no one is calls him by his. Actor I was nope. talking about Sean. By the way, I looked him up. Nobody was calls him Eric. Yeah. Kevin Corkin was yeah. that. I was talking about. Eric is a wild name for this guy. Yeah. Right. When his when later on in the movie when his mom's like Eric, it's like it's so funny because it was like blade, 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 and it's just, I don't know, it cracks me up. But I do so, what I do like about this movie, and so few comic book movies do it. I like how Blade is already established. The vampires all yeah. know who he is. He's mm-hmm. a fucking you know, he's the fucking well, he's been hunting the vampire. Them. Yeah, him, him, and him and Abraham Whistler have been hunting him across the country. Um, I know, but like, I feel like a lesser movie. You know, he, this is his. It'd be the whole mission. origin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Like, what we saw his origin. He got cut out of his mom. Some, the only movie that does that well, I think, is The Crow. Honestly, but like, yeah. the, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. No, well, that, they're all surprised. So, so yeah. is Eric Draven, and that's also an Eric. So that's fun. Um, hey, Eric. So anyway. So now, uh, so they, so he burns dude to pieces, uh, and then he goes about blading things, uh, because he's, he's on the hunt for Deacon Frost. So they bring the smoldering corpse to the morgue, because that's what you do. Uh, and a hematologist is like, let me look at his blood. And the other guy's it like, It is very dig- important that there is a blood scientist in this movie for plot yeah. reasons. <laughs> There's a sexy blood doctor who was also in, I believe she was the lead in Alien vs. Predator. Oh um, shit! She's really? also a science person in that. Yeah, she befriends a predator, and I hate it. Um, so yeah, that <laughs> that movie's so, terrible. So also she, written by David S. Goyer, if I remember correctly. Uh, mm. More David S. Goyer. So now he. Oh, uh, you don't. You can't win them all. Can't win them all. So now uh, this. Uh, she takes some blood samples from this guy, and this other guy's like, "We should date some more." And then the corpse <laughs> comes back and chews his neck to pieces, and then it also bites her. And then Blade shows Dude, up to finish it, it off. When, when throws, Donald Logue probably throws her off a roof. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that shit Dude, yeah. yeah, and no one gives a fuck about her. Like, when the cops show up, they just start opening fire on I mean, that's really everything. I mean, fair. Yeah, but, but when Donald Logue comes back to life, that shit's terrifying. Like, his, like, charred body and, like, like I, what I, I, I mean, I like a lot of things about this movie. But this movie is, like, violent. Like, it's yeah. so violent. It's, like, hard, it, but it's, like, it, movie. it's also, like, be, I, I don't think it's intentional, but, like, it's got, like, John Carpenter, like, Big Trouble Little China vibes, too, with, yeah. like, some of the gore yeah. because the effects aren't quite there. And, yeah. like, I'm sure this is meant to be disturbing, but it's, like, also incredibly funny. Yeah, yeah it's agreed. A little, it's a little goofy. So <laughs> she gets bit in the neck. Blade extradites her via rooftop tossing. Uh, they go <laughs> him Alex right there. He, he just, just fucking yeets her. <laughs> he sends her. Um, lots of women get sent in this movie. Um, so then they go back to Blade Base, which is also where RoboCop uh, rehabilitated himself by shooting jars of uh, baby food with uh, Lewis. Baby food. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you meet Abraham Whistler, played by outlaw country singer Chris Christopherson. Based communist Chris Christopherson. Also, so, Robin and Bobby Chris, McGee. So, uh, Chris Christopherson rocks. 
Chris yeah. Christopherson rules. I'm not mad at Chris Christopherson. So yeah, he's the man. Also, I had one of the greatest like when people were fucking booing Sinead O'Connor because she fucking stood up against the Catholic Church. Remember, he yeah. like came up to her and he's like, "Don't let the bastards get to you." It's like fuck. Also, yeah, dude. also, Dick her down. So good on him. Hell Dicker. yeah, that's fact. <laughs> And also, like, they were asking him about, like, Vietnam and shit, and he came out pro-communist. So, like, Christmas yeah. since aces in my book all the yeah, way around. fucking rules. Yeah. He also managed to hide a full-blown 12-gauge shotgun in a strip light fixture somehow. So, shout out to Chris Christopherson. He has a shotgun that shoots through, like, destroys walls like fucking yeah. Joe Pesci's gun and Johnny Dangerously. <laughs> it shoots through schools. Um, so you meet him. And they start talking about stuff, but you don't get the lore dump you would have expected. Thank in this Christ. Uh, Good lore. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then, so they, they treat the lady and they explain some stuff about vampires are real and your blood is like blah, 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 and here's your neck now. And her holes on her neck are very, very, very far apart. Um, And they're like, all right, you can go back to your apartment now. And they're like, all right, bet. And so she does. And then the (laughs) cops show up, and the cop's like, hey, I'm just here to do a wellness check. Oh, by the way, I'm going to zap you. And then Blade just busts up her. Like, it was like the scene in Face Off where they're like, man, they're fucking my house. Oh, my house is getting fucked up. (laughs) It's uh, Nick Cassavetes. There, it's like, funny though, cause there's a, there's a line where she's like, is all this necessary? It's <laughs> fucking hilarious. I like laugh my ass off cause I was thinking the same, cause he literally just like he pop just power bombing him through the, every table in her place. <laughs> Any vertical surface, his face just went onto or into. It looked like, like a finishing sequence from it, fucking it is, Mortal it is, Kombat. Was anybody else a little distracted that it's like, oh yeah, this is still the 90s so they can talk to women like shit in the entire movie? Like, you fucking yeah. whore, what are you looking at, you skis? Like, <laughs> Yeah. This movie did not pass the Bechtel test. So, uh, and then he proceeds God, to beat. The what fuck is the out Bechtel test? Time. The Bechtel test, if I'm saying it correctly, is when two women speak to each other in a movie, but they're not speaking about a man. Oh, nailed it. He's he's correct. That's correct. Yeah, um, I know. I just said that. So, well, uh, technically, Blade, in this movie, they do pass it, I believe, on a technicality because her and the mother talk about Blade. But he's technically not a man. He's a half man. Ah. Fair enough. So mm. it's a half a Bechtel. Uh, You're going to have to go to Gene Sterator for the ruling. <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, so, so now they use, so they figure out that the cop is running blood for. Uh, well, real quick. They, yeah. So Blade beats the shit out of this cop in the girl's apartment. So you're like, okay. But then he proceeds to drag him all the way outside. In the middle of the day, people are just walking around, and Blade's just beating the fuck out of this cop. He is bouncing his head off of the trunk of right. his car. <laughs> I, I, and the guys like in the police uniform are on strike, because the last time <laughs> a, a dude named Eric wild out in public like that, it did not go uh, well yeah. for him. And, yeah. like... Oh, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't do it. But, uh, <laughs> like, there's a scene later I, I'm sure we'll get to, but, like, I texted the boys. And I was like, the most unbelievable thing about this movie is there's a black dude at Gumby just airing out the park with a pistol and no <laughs> cops show up. Yeah, well, in this scene, he ends the scene. The, the, the cop that got the shit kicked out of him runs away, and Blade, like, pulls his gun and is ready to shoot him again in the middle of the day. Well, the hematologist <laughs> stops him, and then you get the most genuine reaction from Wesley Stott's like, what the fuck are you doing? or whatever. Is, it Guys, is, is Blade's machine pistol based on any kind of actual gun or is this just like so, a bullshit movie gun? So I looked it up because oh. that's what I do. It is a yeah. Mac, it's a Mac 11. Oh. It's so a modified a Mac 11, yeah. It's just like yeah. it's got a big old body on it because I was I went to the Internet Firearms Database. I was like, what is Blade's pistol? And Low is that like the internet movie database? Is that as easy it to is. navigate? It's just, it's just for, yeah, you can look up a movie and it will tell you all the guns in the movie. That's oh, cool. That's there pretty cool. Go. So you um, can buy one of those? I mean, you can't. It's very hard to buy a Mac 11, but yes. I probably could. I mean, oh, yeah. I got 11 it's Mac harder. 11s, about 838s, 99s. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, anywho, yeah, he shoots the dude, dude runs away, and now they're in stakeout mode. They got Pringles and pizza, and they're just watching the police car, and then dude comes back, and then we have a speed ramp car chase scene. Uh, and then they take dude back down and beat, they beat his, oh no, what did, what happens next? They chase him, he goes to report to Deacon Frost. By the way, Deacon Frost is doing his own thing on the side. We haven't even talked about Deacon Frost. Deacon Frost, played by, not Christian Slater, played by Stephen Dorff. <laughs> 
Uh, he's over here trying to upset vampire norms. He's, he's really putting a thumb in the eye of Udu Kier. He's out here trying to make Lamagra come back. He's he's using his Zune to translate <laughs> millennial <laughs> old texts, like because these texts. No, dude, that shit cracked me up because Udo Kier comes down. He's like, it's ancient text. Nobody can read it. And then like later on, Literally the movie whistler speaks to him. The computer's like, here's the there's words right. on the screen saying exactly <laughs> what he's to say. And then the later can Udo see. Kier. Or, like, Whistler gets a little sheet of it, and he reads it immediately. <laughs> Dude, that cracked me up when he's like, La Marga. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> Fucking Chris Christofferson got the entire, like, I don't know, something it's written in blood, something about the blood of the 12, bring it back, the blood God. He read that off of, like, like there couldn't have been one complete sentence. Also, 1,000% the plot of that apocalypse storyline in X-Men where he has to get the 12 mutants together to make the mutant god. Like, it right, is right. Deep, like lifted wholesale. And you know David Goyer probably read a bunch of X-Men shit because he also wrote that movie. Yeah. So, anywho, um, so that's happening. Also, can, can uh, we talk about uh, the, the the funniest line for me in the movie where Udo Kier comes to fucking get in Seamdorf's ass and he's like, hey, man, it's a library. You don't have to yell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so Deacon Frost wants to take over all of the humans because the rest of the vampires had gone soft, but he wasn't born a vampire and everybody else is just, you know, a soft I don't boy or lady. How- how Steve, how Deacon Frost, because they make such a big deal about him not being a pure blood. How he got into this position of power to begin with, I don't understand. But I mean, he must have climbed the vampire. I, I assume it's like guy. it's like a, a Frank White type situation. Like he wasn't uh, born into it, but he just kind of like you know he aligned he's himself really with everybody. Yeah, yeah, like he's super good at vampiring. Maybe <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's setting up blood raves. Um. So, anywho, uh, this cop's like, yo, Frost, I ran into Blade. What's going on? And then Frost just eats his neck to pieces. Uh, and they're like, all right, well, we better go fuck some shit up now. Oh, wait. Oh, by the way, we need to summon Lamagra. Oh, by the way, we need 12 pure bloods and we need a daywalker. Oh, convenient. We have a daywalker. His name is Blade. Oh, by the way, it's going to require this temple that we all just happened to be at that we all forgot about. I, I, yeah. I know this is probably a stupid question to ask, being that this movie has like the loosest of plots. But like, how often does this like in, this uh, like in utero uh, bite <laughs> thing happen to create daywalkers? Like, does this happen a lot? Because it feels like I know that, that there's some vague mention of a prophecy, but right. like, are there enough daywalkers around that that would have made it into the fucking lore, or what's going on? So here's the deal, right? Like, if you needed to make daywalkers, you just gotta start biting pregnant ladies. Yeah, but do they Seems know like that? Part. I think they must have figured it out. Oh, okay. Because they because they kept Blade's mom, so they must know that he was in utero bitten and became the daywalker. Oh, I thought like he just kept her for fucking. She is hot. I thought it's happening. She is. Her. Oh, well. He's so hot that I feel like maybe I'm the only one that read her meeting with her son is incredibly like sexual. <laughs> like, oh, I feel like, like, that's the no. only way you can read it. Ooh. Okay, it's good. Like, practically, like, I was getting worried. Him. Yeah, it's yeah. incredibly horny. It's fucking oh. weird. I, I, I don't understand. Like I that whole those two scenes that with her, him and his mom. It's like what even is this? Like she's yeah, like vampire. stroking his chest and like yeah, vampires are just too horny. Too I mean, that's like the it. key and peel. Why are y'all doing that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, the, so, the hot chick from uh, those phone commercials is in that in that sketch. Yeah. With her big old cans. Yeah. So they find the they find the vampire archives. And they find the big fat vampire and they torture that vampire with a UV light. Uh, and it's sort of supposed to be played for laughs, but it's kind of just tragic and sad. Um, also, the. Hematologist how do they get that up. fat? If they can only drink blood, how the hell do they get that fat? Fat, fat, a of, fat, a lot of blood. Fat blood. Fat blood. Can, can, they, can they not blood. eat? Is that stated well, in the in movie? in some vampire lore. I like, said in this movie. It has to be uh, in the movie for it to count. I think they never they can't. They, 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 were never showing them, they, were, they were, like, drinking. Oh, uh, okay. They like, didn't really. Like, they were definitely smoking. They were, like, drinking booze. I believe. Well, then I guess they can imbibe regular food and drink. So yeah, there you go. It's not well, like what we do in the shadows where they vomit <laughs> blood. <laughs> I had it. She had a chip. <laughs> oh, um, 
the vomiting that's the, and that's what that's we do in the show is so funny. Vampire universe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone is really good. Well, well, that's also like in this universe, like. Blade oh, yeah, is in. Yeah. Blade is in. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wesley Snipes has canonical, really bad. Canonical. Wesley Snipes has really bad internet. In the farm. Yeah. <laughs> what are you all talking about? I keep going in and out. Fix your internet, Wesley. Jeez. Also, I mean, like, based, I feel like. Based on, based on that show, like, every vampire show and movie is all in the same canon. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, Swinton. Or uh, True Blood. Damn, Alex, you there. gotta watch that movie. The fucking um, Only, Only Lovers, Lovers Left Alive. I think you would like it. With her and Tom Hiddleston. Oh, what's the? She just had another movie come out with her and uh, what's his name? Idris Elba, where he's like a vampire or something. Hmm. Is it Blackula? Like, is it a reboot? Oh no! no. You're thinking of that? Are you thinking of that one where he's a genie? Oh, maybe that's it. He's a genie. It's like a yeah. It's called like a thousand years of some. It's the George Miller. I can't remember the name of the fucking movie. Anyway, continue, guys. So anyway, they escape the archives and like Whistler blows up a wall in a basement using a truck or a motorcycle or who knows what. Uh, and the, like they escape from the the Joker gang plus uh that that other cat oh, keeps getting is this, parts is sliced this to the pieces. part where um uh, Donald Logue has blade sword and it has that weird fucking wind up mechanism that fucking pops yeah. off blows his hand to shit because well, that's blows the other guys, it blows the no blows the other guy's hand to shit cuz he's mocking him about the pig sticker and then oh yeah then yeah, they, yeah then they then then they they drop a satchel charge in there and they blow that all the fucking back and then they uh rub dude's face against the subway and then uh and and Abraham Whistler escapes through the sewers because that's just what he do. Um, and then we're all going to reconvene and what have you. Uh, so it's a lot of this. There's a lot of these fights, retreat, fight, retreat, fight, retreat. Um, we find out some more lore. We find out how Abraham Whistler's family got eaten. Uh, we find out uh, that this blood scientist wants to stick around and not become a vampire. She's got like two days left because the the garlic they injected into her eyeballs didn't knock all the vampire blood out so she's like hey i got this stuff it's an anticoagulant and it turns uh vampire blood into a semtex and so they did that uh and stuff went exploding so like, all right i'll make you some some darts of that cool that'll be useful so uh then blade goes off to do some more blading things uh and whistler and girl are hanging out and then uh meanwhile uh steven dorf is with uh, he takes the one of the pure bloods out for a, a stroll on a jetty, and even though he's just wearing biker gear and I guess like zinc oxide, that's all vampires need to li- really live in the sun. Excuse me. Then Udu Kier explodes when he sees the sunrise, and uh, it's violent and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. When Udu Kier explodes, it looks awesome. It looks pretty dope. It's right up there with like you know, it's like when the dude's melting at the end of Raiders. There are um, a lot of bodies exploding in this movie, like way dude, more than I rec- remember. So many people explode in like gross, gross ways. Um, yeah. So then Blade's getting distracted by Steven Dorf in the real world, and he tosses a young Asian girl through a shopping cart and almost gets hit by a bus. And meanwhile, uh, the rest of the vampire boys start rounding up Whistler and the girl, uh, and then they just they just do a number on his ass, and then they take her away. And then they lure Blade to a trap because they need Blade's blood to make the the Death Tower work. Uh, so now we're all we're all back in the Death Tower where we meet Blade's mom, and she's been here the whole time. And we're gonna lock <laughs> him in this standing casket with knives on his wrists, and we're gonna bleed him out, uh, and then drip blood onto both onto all of the twelve pure bloods, even though one of them gets one of them got. died. What, what right, they thought, what they're they thought very explicit, like, we need all 12 of you. Yeah. And that woman just guts that dude and turns him into dust. I'm like, well. But it turns out it didn't make it. I thought maybe, you know, I thought maybe because it was, like, not all the way powered, that would be why he it would, would win. weaken no, him? Yeah. They don't even reference it at all. No, who no. cares? I know the yeah, movie doesn't. doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Also, so one he, of these vampires looks just like Orson Welles, like, pre-Touch of Evil, which made me laugh. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, also, also for some reason, the the hematologist's uh, would be boyfriend who got bit in the beginning of the movie is being kept in like the dusty basement of this place. Like, like for some reason, in well, the rancor a, pit, they just there's throw like a her drop down line there. before she gets thrown down there, where he said that they turned him, but like he didn't turn right, 
so he turned into like a zombie, and so that's why they they thought it was just funny to keep him down there. Oh well, that's fun. Well, he's gross. Yeah. Um, yeah. But she escapes that, and then she's off doing whatever. But meanwhile, Blade's getting milked, um, and uh, Stephen Dorf gets all the pure bloods uh, souls explode, and Stephen Dorf is attacked by a swarm of gargoyles. And then next thing you know, he's La Magra. That's right. It just means lean in Spanish, if I understand correctly. Um, then, so uh, the mom and the lady get into a fight, and that how that's how Blade gets released, right? Like she she does the mom yeah. in, right? Or does she did she just get Blade released? Does Blade do them? Do them? I just watched this, and I can't recall. Who does uh, the mom? In? She she stabs Blade. the mom with a bone, which makes no sense. Nice, but but Blade that's... finishes her off, right? <laughs> No, I'm pretty um, sure it was the vampirolo- the bloodologist. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. it was the hematologist. No, Blade, because um, Blade has that whole fun thing where he's like, I must, she's like, I'm your mother, and he's like, I yeah, must he, release he, you. Yeah, he stabs her oh, or that's whatever. Right. Yeah, that's right, yeah, that's right. But then he gives she her the lets, old saving private Ryan. But then she gives up her neck to Blade, and Blade sucks her almost dry, and now he's full of hematologist blood. Uh, so he goes downstairs, and we that's get That's the smartest have, blood. It is. Uh, it's the blood that knows the blood. So he rolls downstairs and he starts having one of those Mortal if Kombat If I were fight. blood, what would I do? <laughs> Sorry. Probably bleed. Um, so uh, they have one of those Mortal Kombat fight stages where you just keep getting punched through this walls. Fight, and fucking rules. Places. It's great. There's fighting on fighting. On fighting. It, it they are just in, r- ruining their swords, by the way. Oh, it my ends God. in the funniest way possible, though, with Steven Dwarf literally doing, like, a fucking cat's at him. He, like, jumps up, and he's, like, he's, he's like poised to oh, strike. That's, he looks, dude, that's the fucking Trinity jump in The Matrix. Like, she does that. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, but it's not shot from that angle, so it doesn't look as... Uh, no, it looks goofy as fuck, but that's <laughs> yeah, the move, yeah. Is this... The, wait, which fight scene does he do a full-blown German suplex? Uh, or is it a that's German... The what's the one, movie. No, wait, which one's the one where you... What's the one where you hold him straight up next to you, and then you drop? That's like, a regular like, suplex. He does one in this movie. Okay. Doesn't matter. Anyway, they fight. At some point, he made two, like... Ninjas explode with the hematologist like special goop, um, and then so now he's fighting La Magra heads up, and he slices off Steven Dorf's arm, and it just turns into more blood arm, and then God, that, effect, Dorf, that effect with his like arm regenerates looks so bad. It looks like I am more man. It's so it's awesome. So... It's when he gets ripped in half, and like his blood <laughs> grabs and sticks him back together. <laughs> like he's just made of. He has no bones. He's like Twinkie the kid. Like he's just or, like, made of yes, from Futurama. <laughs> I do yeah, it looked, like, it looked like that effect in fucking Venom when Venom like sticks Venom. out of Eddie and then talks to him. Like, yeah. <laughs> so he gets dark. That movie also and rules. He, but he stitches sure. himself back together, and then he says, "My turn." And then they have a little more fight about knock around. And then Blade's like, "I'm gonna hit him with the anticoagulant," and then he does, and he explodes. Oh, hang on. And well, his 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 sword gimmick comes back into play. It's like check off sword exploding thing because he has to throw it up in the wall to get it to knock the shit back down to it. To it. Steve Dorff says, "Nice shot." Um, yeah. And <laughs> I don't. Well, here's the thing. I uh, we had a text about this because oh. I think you could make a supercut of every time we've said the term Stephen Dorff blood tornado, blood tornado, yeah, human blood tornado. Stephen Dorff does not happen and in the film. I watched. I I had to rewind. I was like, I couldn't have possibly missed it. Did I? Like, I just. <laughs> I was like, there is no. I thought it was. What, I thought it was a Mandela effect, Mandela effect, yeah. or whatever. We just have a collective hallucination of what's real, and thank the maker that fucking TJ is like, nope, it was an alternate ending where he turns but into it, a full blown blood like, tornado. Like I said in the text thread, like back then, like we were all probably watching every fucking. Oh yeah, special let's watch the, on the, the director's commentary for fucking Milk Money, like which right, is definitely yeah, a exactly. thing that I never so did. We, we probably <laughs> all watched the fucking dir- the, the, the the DVD special. Well, apparently. They that alternate ending where Steven Dorf wins, they're supposed to spin that off like into a like a reboot of it where like the where he becomes the blood god and all this shit and Steven Dorf is going to come back all the stuff before that Marvel got the rights back. Oh, weird. That'd also, like, can we talk about how incredibly awesome it is where Blade takes the last vial, throws it up there, and then kicks it into Stephen Dorff's eye? <laughs> yeah, 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 his forehead. Well, earlier, it seems like the worst idea for like. <laughs> Getting a 
getting it intact er- into his brain. Oh, yeah. Earlier in the movie, I think he, like, harpoons Donald Logue, and he does, like, the, yes! He does the Macaulay Culkin, yes! Like, he does the Home Alone, so yes! It's so really? fucking awesome. There, there's things more dangerous than vampires. Like, what? Like, like me. Mean. Like, that's an actual line in the movie. <laughs> it's also how the uh, Blade by, uh, is it Mystical starts, and it's, that sounds a banger. Edge of the Blade by Mystical. Yeah. Strong recommend. Alec, you were saying? Um... I like uh, Stephen Dorff and Donald Logue's relationship. Yeah, um, cool. it's like it's like big brother, little brother. And like towards the end, he's like, "Hold your hand out," because he's gonna fake cut his yeah. hand off. Yeah, 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 and yeah. he's like, "Seriously, again?" He's like, nah. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then at the very, very end, Donald Logue's like, "We're gonna be gods." And Stephen Dorff just kind of looks at him like, "Yeah." yeah, yeah. We yeah, we're gonna be we're, gods. we're yeah. gonna be gods. I do, have, I do have a question. What their grand plan is? Because oh, like no. he was gonna he was gonna be like the blood god that overtakes the world and turns everybody right. Like he wants all. Like, it's like if that's everyone's no food, special, no, no one. No, they, they, there's no food supply, right? Like, isn't this a yeah, bot? Go, go see the movie Daybreakers or whatever that movie was yeah, called. Yeah, shan't. I saw it in the theater. That was enough. I think we did watch yeah. it, didn't was that no, we have not I think we've all seen it. Is that the we one with Willem Dafoe? Yeah. yeah. And Ethan Sam, Hawk. Sam Neill. Yeah. I've never yeah. seen it. But I've it never sucks. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good premise. I didn't get that Terrible mixed movie. up with I didn't get that mixed up with Ultraviolet, because that's also vampire based, if I remember correctly. That movie also sucks, it but it's a lot of fun. Weren't they they're they're not called the were they not called vampires? They're called like hemophages or something. Yeah, the hemophage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The blood chinois. <laughs> the, the blood chinois, chinois. which literally just means the blood Chinese, <laughs> which is awesome. <laughs> oh, so anyway, uh, they blow up Stephen Dorff, and then Karen, the the hematologist, is like I'll help you, Blade, and then they go to Moscow and fight more yeah, vampires. Yeah, and then hang on, hang on. This is where my favorite line in the movie happens. I I, I wrote it down. Hang on, it is said. Buy a reliable enterprise hard drive from server parts, serverparts.com. <laughs> <laughs> also, this movie rules because it presupposes that uh, communism never ended in the Soviet Union because he definitely says, like, how are you doing, comrade? Yeah, love it. Oh, that's good times. And that's, that's the movie. Which is, which is weird because the second one... I think is in Romania, not Russia, right? Is there an explanation? As to, well, we'll find out when we watch it, but never mind. Find out, uh, Alec. Um, was the techno music your favorite aspect of this film? Uh, what about no. the science? Techno, the techno music was pretty great, though. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> what about uh, the blood my, science? My favorite uh, part of the movie was uh, Wesley Snipes' incredulous line delivery. <laughs> what about oh, where he just mouths crazy? what the fuck what the yeah, fuck? yeah I love that that was awesome like, it's so he he's so bad but it's so good yeah Dude. like it's perfect for this movie like oh. the way he delivers everything and the way he's like mush mouthing it because he has these fucking vampire teeth prosthetics <laughs> yeah. it. it's like a kid with this fake vampire teeth at Halloween trying to talk I mean, but they fucking, were just like, you can take him out, man. Like, you're not no. bearing your teeth every well, scene. Well, you heard the story of Pat Oswald told her how he insists on being called Blade on the set of the films. Like, he was that deep into it. Oh, wow. You know, and was it the second one or the third one? He refused to either close his eyes or open his eyes for a scene where he's supposed to be just laying there. And they see the third one, I think, and they yeah. CGI'd. CGI'd. Yeah. 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 Fucking, uh, you know, the, 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 I guess, famous, uh, motherfuckers always trying to ice skate uphill. You know, he ad libbed that and nobody under, like, nobody was, everybody had to be like, what the fuck does that even mean? And like, it's how like, yeah, we keep the that. Ice, how would you even lay the ice on the hill to make it's it? Like, yeah. It's like I mean, Alex said, though, it it's stuck like, with me forever. He's very committed perfect. to it. Yeah. Because, like, it's like he's, at the same time, he's, like, grossly out of character, but it works so well. Like, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> like, yeah, I, because there's I, nothing I in, like, the, the like the body of his dialogue that's, like, quippy, but, like, whenever he's by himself, he quips, which is weird, like, but it yeah, works. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, 
Anything, let's see. Well, anything else we're going to talk about before we get to five knuckle shuffles? This movie's so much fucking fun, man. Like, I know we said it before, but it is, like, exactly like a canon movie with a decent budget. Like, it's so, like, oh, I'll wait till I get to my score in my. All right. Anything else, guys? Five knuckle yeah. shuffles. Um, Sean. Uh, it's like a nine for me, man. Like, this movie's a fucking blast. Like, I wish... And maybe it's just because it's first out of the gate, but it makes you wish, like, comic book movies tried more shit or were, like, a little bit jankier, because comics are janky. Like, it's not super respectful to the source material, which is totally fine, because Deacon Frost is some old, like, Ogliostro type also, guy I didn't know in the Mar- comics. I didn't know Marv Wolfman was a co-creator on Blade. I had no idea, actually. I think Wolfman. Yeah, I think I think weirdly Marv Wolfman was involved with all those Werewolf by Night and Tomb of Dracula and all that shit. Him and like Gene oh. Colan. Uh, I had no idea. Yeah, I knew Gene Colan was involved, but I didn't know that. I, I always I always associate Marv Wolfman with DC, you know, like Teen Titans yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Like that. Anyway, but he, he's fucking walking around with a sword and a scabbard on his back, like with that crazy <laughs> ass fucking like half day law Gumby shit he's got going on. Like he catches his sunglasses, but like. I, a couple people have made the point, like, the scenes don't really go together. They're just kind Not of, like, all. Yeah. haphazardly <laughs> assembled in a linear fashion. Like, it's like, you know, there's so much, like, we're going here, and then we're coming back, and then we're, we gain a little bit of ground, then we go back, and we've got this blood ritual computer thing, and, like, who gives a fuck? But, like, it's, it, like, they were... Go ahead. No, I said they, they were storing those tomes in fucking lucite and like traveling them around, and it just didn't get them. Translated like you said, like, like nobody, forever. nobody can read it, but everybody can read it, and even the computer, yeah. which I don't know how the fuck. Like we're talking about a computer in 1997. I don't know how the fuck that did anything. Also, like, I, I, I love the idea that these are like an ancient race of vampires, and they're just like, yeah, you can't read them. Like they didn't yeah. bother to try. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, like, they didn't even attempt yeah. it. <laughs> the the yeah, vampires literally... are all like fourth generation, fourth generation Puerto Ricans from New Jersey. It's like they're aware of Spanish, but none of them can read it or <laughs> speak it. Well, I mean, like you have like like people, current people that study nothing in, in they they study antiquity. You know, they they, they yeah. read stuff. And the vampires are like, eh. Never mind. Well, they're too busy they're so, fucking so dog. Busy. Have you seen how they get down? Yeah. I mean, that's fair too. I mean, <laughs> respect to that. They're probably like the fat dude in the library is supposed to read all this shit. Like, but you got too fat to read. I don't know. Man. Like, <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> too fat to read. The DJ Sandball story. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's just fun, man. It's like, oh yeah, movies can be fun, and they don't. Like, I, I guess the only my only question would be like. Is this movie intentionally not taking itself seriously, or is it just so janky that like it feels unserious, but they're really committing to it? Because Wesley Snipes is definitely committing to it. I don't know if everybody else is aware of what movie they're in. Oh, but I he's think, not. I think that's. This I think was, it's why it works because it's very sincere. Like it's yeah. earnest. It's, 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 this yeah, is, this is not. It's jank is 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 its own. It's, yeah. I love this movie, man. Like, I, I forgot how much fun this was. I haven't seen... I've seen the second and third one, I feel like, way more. Uh, Definitely the second one. But, like, this movie's a blast, man. Like, I, I can't imagine anybody, like, just flat out not liking this movie, unless there's some kind of weird contrarian hipster or something. But, uh, on that That's note, I'll... That's why used it, too. So, so it's DJ. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to give it to Alec. Um, I'm going to give it to Weird two. contrarian hipster Alec. Alec. <laughs> Uh, it's a it's a one. Oh no! No, no it's a. I gotta give. Uh, I need a seven. Hell yeah! I enjoyed it. It's uh It's ridiculous. It's fun. It is way too long. When I saw this top did it two hours, I was like, "What the fuck?" Is it two, two hours? hours? It is. I it's like two hours, movie, like I, on the dot. Yeah, I thought this movie was gonna be like an hour and a half. I really didn't yeah. expect it to be two hours long. Well, they had like, to do all the lore. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "What the shit is this?" It doesn't really like. It didn't feel like it. Like it was two hours. Like it wasn't like I was dying for it to get moving. But there were also part. It's hard to describe. Hard to explain. Yeah, there were also definitely parts where I was like, "This didn't need to be in here." But it also didn't drag either. Like I don't well, know. Well, I I think it's, it's like it's because it's it's so like fucking incongruent. It doesn't really get yeah. boring because it's not it's not the, the shit doesn't the scenes don't go on long enough. There's just too many of them. Yeah, I mean that's, that's a good way true. to put it. 
I mean, there's how many scenes are there of him, her, and Whistler in the garage talking about the blood yeah. serums or women like, kissing? At least, at least Gross. three or four. Um, but yeah, I thought it was uh, it's fun. I love techno music. Like hell yeah, I love raves. Yeah. It's like my second. <laughs> <laughs> my second uh second highest rated kind of party in a meat locker I would go to was a rave. Um it's first? Uh you don't want to know. Okay. Gathering of the Juggalos. <laughs> Two things Alec loves, the Baltimore Ravens and Caterpillar by DJ Kiyoki. <laughs> Hell yeah. Great song. Um Yeah, Wesley Snipes is like this is this is the perfect Wesley Snipes movie. Like this is what he needs to do. Not like the like serious stuff like Passenger Fifty Seven and things like that. He's or too Wong Fu. I mean that's that's <laughs> on the ridiculous side. But what, in what way? Is it Rising Sun? The, yeah, that, like that sucks. Movie. <laughs> I remember liking that movie. That's what that's a Michael Sean Crichton Connery, thing, right? No, that's Black Rain with Michael Douglas, but also takes place in Japan. Or is both? Yeah, are both of them Michael Crichton? Oh, might be. No, you're thinking of uh, Jurassic Park. No, uh, I, try, I was trying to. The fear. I lost it. I lost the joke. Congo. Congo. Oh, no. That's Michael Crichton. That that's uh, definitely the Andromeda strain. Amy that's good Deb. gorilla. Um, Sphere. Sphere's a good one. <laughs> They're making another Jurassic World movie. Oh, well, yeah. they, people keep seeing them, so... You know, well, I saw a thing on TikTok the other day, and it was like, TikTok has this new trend where they pull things from Reddit, and people just, like, it's basically just, like, Reddit, like, quote, link, or link trees. Yeah, yeah. And the one's like, has any movie ever made so much money and left less of a cultural impact than cool. the Jurassic World movies? <laughs> like, yeah. each one makes, like, $2 billion. And nobody yeah. ever even like remembers them or has any idea what happened to yeah, them. Yeah, like, you're right. There's stadium. not even like the the anti fan community like with the Star Wars yeah. movies. It's no just like cares. they just come and go. Yeah, yeah. But every time they come out, they make billions of dollars. It's nuts. That like I think they're comparing it to Avatar. Like movies that set records leave zero oh, cultural yeah, impact at all. I already forgot that there was a sequel to Avatar. Yeah, the second that just one came like, out what a year ago? I don't less even than know. a year ago, or right around a year ago. I, I I haven't seen it, and I shan't see it. I don't have any interest in it. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so I'm going to give it a seven. Uh, TJ, uh, it's a nine. I, I love this movie. It's so much fun. <laughs> it's so stupid, and like I again, I, Sean's comparison to Canon is exactly what I was going to say. I mean, it's just so. I agree with you, Alec. It is like overlong and it's, it's a collection of the dumbest scenes like ever, but like it's, it's overwhelming stupidity is like so charming to me because I guess they just don't make movies like this anymore. Like where it's just like, I don't know. There's like, yeah, they didn't sand off any of the rough edges. <laughs> like, right. They're all there's there. Nothing, like exactly. That's it. They just, they just put this together and they're like, fuck it. This is a dumbass action movie. And like my, you know, my 17 year old brain just reignites watching this movie. Like it's so dumb. The plot makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> the villains are underdeveloped. Like Blade is, is like, I don't know what Blade is as a character, but he's great. The karate is great. The fucking awful special effects make it even better. And like the headaches, actually some of the effects aren't bad. Like when, um, when those two assassins get their heads exploded in the hallway, I actually thought that effect looked pretty cool. Yeah, I don't um, hate it when the fucking the gargoyles pop out of the people either like that. Yeah. Oh well, God! Did this, did this movie not get a video game? Because it seems like it'd be very video it did. game. Worthy. The first one and the second one both got video games. Did they? Okay. Yeah. I don't. But not the third really one, good. the best one of the three. <laughs> no, they just got a board game. <laughs> Hannibal <laughs> King and Whistler's Daughter. Uh, I, I read some interview where apparently Blade 3 was supposed to be, like, completely different. It was supposed to be, like, a post-apocalyptic movie that sounded, like, kind of interesting, but then the studio interfered and all this. But anyway. But then Ryan Reynolds got in there and said, cock juggling thunder cunt, and they're like, print it. Yeah, right. Oh, God. Anyway, it's a nine. I love this movie. It's a, it's a blast. I'm glad I got to watch it again. It was, it was a lot of fun. Again, like, this is... 
I, I I always get kind of irritated with the when people are like, oh, it's a movie you just turn your brain off and watch it. But this is really is this is a movie like turn your brain off. It's fun. Well, you don't turn your brain off. The movie shuts your brain down. It's like we got it from here, man. Like just go ahead and chill out. <laughs> just relax. You need a, you'll, uh, you need a break, bud. So yeah, it's, it's a nine for me, dog. Um, senior gogs. Oh uh, yeah, it's also gonna be a nine for me. Like I can't not like this movie that much. It's uh. It's stupid as hell, and it just keeps going. Like, it puts its foot on the gas. There are some... There are a bunch of scenes that you're like, why and why now? But I, I work through it just because of all the scenes where uh Blade is <clears throat> cutting, kicking, shooting, or glaving through vampires. Uh And what I... This movie has that, like, that charm of, like, henchmen thinking they have a chance at killing this guy... Even though they've watched like forty guys just die right in front of them, like but they like, definitely do the I'm, let's let's attack one at a time move too. Yeah, yeah, like like you literally just watched everyone you know, everyone that was in your recruitment class, the guys that were in training with you, and the, <laughs> like saw the videos, like people that you may have become friends with, like. You just watch them all just get turned to literal dust. Like, Can you imagine if that, like, in, in your office, if some dude showed up there and all your coworkers just, like, singularly rushed him and you're like, yeah, I'm going to pass. Like, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be like, nah, I'm good, fam. Like, we're cool. I'm going here. back like, to the, I'm going back to the vampire sex party. I, I don't, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't need this. Has, like, like, like the Tim Burton Batman movie. Like, it's just, you get to watch waves of just guys in black. Uh, leather jackets and black, uh, stocking caps and sunglasses just get dismantled. Uh, and it's lovely. Uh, I feel like, I feel like, uh, uh, Deacon Frost, uh, Stephen Dwarf, Human Blood Tornado, uh, I feel like he got done dirty. I feel like he's a better actor than this world gives him credit for. He's fun in this movie. Like, he's a fun yeah. bad guy. Oh, um, he's charismatic. He is doing a Christian Slater the whole time, but I love Christian Slater, so it works. Same. Um, what did you give it? I'm sorry. I give it a nine. Hell yeah. It's a ton of fun. Like, I can't, like, I objectively, I know this movie's, like, not good, but, like, it's, it, it, it just feeds right into my dumb ape brain. <laughs> Since like, when is a movie being good affected our ratings? Right. Like, yeah, it's, like, it's, yeah, like, you the winged serpent. Oh, just everyone! Hey, it's a ton of fun. I don't care. It's this twelve hundred horsepower is stupid as fuck, and I am here for it. So, are we are we doing it? Is Sean's pick next? Or are we just gonna go ahead and do it? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Next Blade week. Two. Next week is it's gonna be it's gonna be. I think Gogs is gonna come around. Gogs, you have had a vendetta. I very well could. I, I, I don't. You have you had a weird vendetta against Blade Two for years, and I've never understood it. I Blade Two, and maybe I'll be, maybe I'll change my mind. I don't know. I remember loving Blade Two. It's got, Look. it's a uh, Guillermo del Toro. It's got like a weird like wrestling fight. They got the vampires that like their fucking whole faces explode. They and got shit. CGI ninjas. They got Donnie yeah. Yen. It's dumber than fuck. Is that Triple H? And it's loud. No, it's yeah, a third Triple one. Triple H is in a third yeah. one. I think Jimmy Hart is in the second one though, if I recall. But we do have Ron I'm, Perlman, and I do love Ron, Ron Perlman's Perlman. in it. Yeah. Aren't they in the, the Blood Pack? Blood Pack? The blood. Yeah. Wait, isn't what's his name from? Uh, They're the Western uh, uh, cell of the Blood Gene Wall. Isn't a <laughs> Except for Donnie Saints Yen, who one? is also Blood Chi. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He plays somebody uh, named like Skank or something. It's like fucking no, the crow. No, Skank's dead. Skank's, <laughs> Skank's dead. All right, so next week, Blade 2. Um, Maybe I'll love it. What if I love I, it? I, I, I'm interested. I, I hope I'm, you do. What if I you love it and we're too. like, oh, it's not good? <laughs> I, I hope I do, because I don't like watching movies that I hate. Like, I don't enjoy it. I think, I think, I don't know. I, I'm interested I, I, in revisiting it. I, I feel like I'm pot committed to this movie being good because I've been telling him since I've known him the play two is better than the first one. I just remember, I just remember the like, the crazy, like, like re- literal, like, wrestling fights that are in Blade yeah. 2. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Anyway, that's the show. I'm starving. We ran it. We had a long one today, so. Yeah. Okay, um, bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Keep it bye. 100. Goodbye. Yep, keep it 100. Keep it a band. <laughs>